Hello, film fans. Welcome to the Film vs. Film podcast. My name is Martin Harries, your host. I'm a filmmaker on occasion, but mainly can't stop yapping about movies. On this podcast, every episode, I pick a topic from a film that's coming out at the cinema or on streaming. I pick a favorite film from that topic and battle it out against a guest to decide which film will become the greatest film of all time. If you enjoy this podcast, please leave us a five star review and subscribe. Please enjoy part one. This episode, as we are going back to our Legends episode, which is very exciting. And of course, this one, we are focusing on an actress that was pretty huge in the 90s and still is, frankly. And that is the legend that is Julia Roberts. So we'll be having a look at her movies. And of course, I can't be talking alone, people. No, no. I am joined by another, yet another returning guest, Claire from Why the Flick podcast. How are you? It is so lovely to have you back on. Hi, I'm great. I am super excited to be here joining you for another Legends episode. I was here <laughs> last year for Robin Williams, so I'm super excited to talk about Julia Roberts today. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was super fun. Uh, I was very pleased that both our movies got into your top five of Rob Williams' yes, uh, posts, uh, films for, for that Instagram post. <laughs> Uh, So Claire, tell us about your podcast and where can we find you? Yeah, so as you already mentioned, my podcast is called Why the Flick. And for every episode, I basically have a different guest on and we talk about a different movie each time. Uh, We really just talk about all aspects of the film and the premise is why the flick did we pick this movie. So we deep dive a lot of the ins and outs of the film And then at the end, we have a little segment special, um, different segments that we kind of run through that are really fun. We also rate the film at the end. And yeah, it's it's a fun time. We're available wherever you listen to podcasts. You can really find us anywhere. And then we're also at Why the Flick on social, most social. I'm pretty active on Instagram and TikTok mostly, but you can find us there as well. Yeah, I must say your TikTok account is fabulous. Do check her out there. Uh, So Julia Roberts then, like she at one point was certainly probably the one of the biggest movie stars around, I would say, you know, Pretty Woman sent her into the stratosphere (laughs) in terms of Hollywood icons and kind of hasn't really left that stratosphere, frankly, not as prolific as she once was, I don't think. Um, but yeah, she's still pretty huge, I think. Yeah, I still, I mean, not to give away the film I picked, but it's one of her <laughs> most recent films. Um, and yeah, she was such a such a star of the 90s. I feel like she, like in the 90s was peak Julia Roberts, as well as like peak rom-com era. And she went so hand in hand with yeah. that. Um, and she's definitely had a wide range, though, outside of even just rom-com, because she won her Oscar for Aaron Brockovich, and that was more of a dramatic role. So I feel like she definitely has quite a range. Yeah, definitely a, a rom-com queen. And yes, when required, she can really do, uh, you know, the serious drama stuff with Aaron Brockovich, as you said. Like in terms of like the quality of her films, like sometimes they're I think they are a bit mm-hmm. hit and miss, but. She's always like one of the best parts in the movie. Yeah. I would say. Yeah. She's really got some star power. And even if the film as a whole isn't that great, like she's always the one you kind of remember, I would say. Yeah. She definitely has that memorable quality to any film that she's in, whether it's good or bad, whether you like it or not, you always remember Julia Roberts. So, my choice then, I found this kind of easy (laughs) to go with i mean someone said maybe choose pretty woman because i haven't actually seen that one i know Mm. shock horror but it's on the list (laughs) uh some people kind of say now nowadays is a bit overrated but it'll be interesting to revisit that at one point but i went with my guilty pleasure (laughs) and that is uh notting hill i do love that one um i mean i'm not exactly like a big rom-com guy it's not exactly my favorite genre 
I mean, if you're talking like rom coms, we've never actually done rom com episode. We've done over a hundred episodes, never done one. Oh my gosh! That probably speaks to the fact that I'm not a huge fan of that genre. But like, if I were to pick like my top two, it would probably or top three. Um, up the apartment would be number one, and then like number two would be when Harry met Sally. Oh yeah, classic. And then my third choice would certainly be Notting Hill. I think any others after that i'm like eh, they're really not as good as mm-hmm. those three <laughs> certainly notting hill i think is more cheesy than those two but i i love a bit of cheese sometimes in my movies and, and this one provides it uh in spades <laughs> absolutely and i mean the chemistry between julia roberts and hugh grant is is remarkable and i mean i love anything hugh grant is in as well so it's nice to to see him yeah <laughs> Uh, so what happens in Notting Hill? Well, going to IMDb, as I like to cheat these days. So a set of circumstances make Anna Scott, a famous actress, uh, fall in love with William Thacker, owner of a bookstore in Notting Hill. But the paparazzi's fascination with her complicates their bond and their relationship. So, Claire, what did you make of Notting Hill? This is the first time I've ever seen this movie. Okay. <laughs> so this is my first watch, and I love wow. this movie. It, I watched it twice because I <laughs> loved it so much. Wow. And I'm, like, not very much into rom-coms either. I'm not, like, huge in the rom-com space, right. but I feel like I the rom-coms I enjoy most are the ones from the 90s, so I'm a little biased. And this to me feels like yeah. quintessential <laughs> 90s rom-com. It's like coming at the end of the peak of yeah. these rom-coms that we've had. And I feel like it does a really good job of like being a rom-com and having those rom-com elements. But also, I don't know, to me, it felt kind of grounded in a lot of ways, too, even though it is this like outlandish yeah. story. And, you know, it is like a modern day princess falls in love with like the common man kind of story. But the way that yeah. they tell it and especially the acting in it and the way the script is written, I think is just super smart and really keeps you engaged through their love story. And I believe their love story, which is, you know, you need to in a rom-com. I agree with a lot of that. And I think obviously this is uh, written by Richard Curtis as well. And you can really feel a lot of the British humor come through with his writing. It's absolutely hilarious at times, literally like laugh out loud funny. Yeah, and it's just got some really interesting aspects of how they kind of change up the rom-com uh, story. So I think it is fairly traditional. It hits a lot of the usual beats that you would expect, but like, it's just really interesting with Julia Roberts' character, the way she kind of struggles mm-hmm. with fame and like a lot of the other characters feel like they're losers <laughs> yeah. in this kind of um, middle-class part of London in Notting Hill. And they're all kind of like looking up to people like Julia Roberts character, whereas she kind of wants to come down to that kind of level of, of normalcy. Uh, So I do like that aspect of the film as well as it being like really funny. And the acting is just incredible at times, especially from Julia Roberts. Mm -hmm. Yes. So directing then I loved the simple direction with, like Reese Iphens, who plays Spike. Oh my and gosh. The t-shirt gags at the yes. beginning. Like in the scene, we just follow like Hugh Grant going back and forth making breakfast while like Spike puts on different t shirts saying, I love blood. <laughs> <laughs> and then get it here with an arrow pointing to his penis, obviously. Mm-hmm. And then finally, one saying, You're the most beautiful woman in the world. And you're like, Oh, that's actually quite sweet and a tad on the nose, but sweet. Then, of course, he turns around and it say, says, Fancy a fuck. <laughs> and I love the little bit of acting from Hugh Grant where he's kind of just off camera a little bit where. He just puts his hand up a little bit Mm -hmm. about to say something, but just doesn't bother. Yeah. So I love kind of that initial scene that just puts you into this uh, world of of, um, quite crass uh, British humor at times, especially from this character. Yeah, I I think this scene was when I was like, okay, I'm like hooked. I'm like ready to be here. I love Spike. He's my 
yeah. favorite. Per- one of, I mean, there's so many great performances, but he's definitely one of my favorites. And just the whole like fat, like his fashion in this movie, I feel like we could have a whole conversation about that separately. <laughs> but yes, I love the way that the, it is shot in. I love almost all of the scenes inside their flat. Like, I just love how you almost feel like you're living there with them. And there's so many like little things that are in the scene that you don't notice. Like I think later on there's even like a, a chalkboard and it says spike clean. And it's like, yeah, there's yeah. just dirty dishes everywhere. It's, you can tell it's like two guys who live together. Yeah. I, and the way that the camera moves throughout the apartment um, back and forth in that particular scene with the t-shirts, I think is really well done too. It's, it's kind of like, Oh God, what is he going to come down with next? And yeah. <laughs> um, you think you have it at the end. You think, Oh, this is a great t-shirt. And then he turns around and it's like, Oh, we, they got us again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think this film does like a really good job of doing like slow or short montages yes uh you have like this like hilarious collection of scenes where hugh grant has to interview the whole cast of a <laughs> sci-fi film and where like hugh grant and julia roberts are enjoying the beginning of their relationship where they enter this private garden we have this like big twirling overhead shot i feel like i'm going to be saying twirling shots a lot especially in the next film Mm -hmm. uh and ronan keating kind of like takes over with the music and we have just like a simple tracking shot on them both at the cinema while hugh is wearing goggles actually (laughs) uh then we go into the restaurant scene then we have like very short scenes with Hugh Grant dating all these very funny different women in his sister's apartment. So I think if the film tried to do more of a traditional like fast paced montage scene, I feel like the film would lose some of its charm. Mm-hmm. You know, this film has a very deliberate underplayed pace to it, uh, which works well with like Julia Roberts character kind of struggling as a big star, I would say. So it's interesting with the pacing here that you know it's quite measured because a lot of films these days certainly comedies the pace is just really fast and even well any film frankly the pace kind of takes over whereas this i just like it because the film is kind of letting the actors do a lot of the work um which i really appreciate in this film yeah I think like montages are something that are quintessential to rom-coms. I feel like you can't have a rom-com yeah. without some sort of montage. And sometimes they're super corny, but I feel like yeah. in the case of Notting Hill, it's really smart in how they use the montages to so- show passage of time as well. Because in particular mm. with the scene where William is going through all of those unsuccessful dates and meeting these very quirky characters um you realize that you know this is to show that it's been like a few months that have passed since his last meeting with with anna and so i feel like that's done in a really smart way we still get to like have that personality factor of of hugh grant but you know also like moving the story along and i think one scene in particular even like toward the end one of my favorites is when william is walking down a street and it's showing the passage yeah. of time with the seasons changing that I, that's remarkable to me. And yeah. I just feel like it's it's so cleverly done where he goes into one one instance and there's snow. And then within the next instance, yeah. it's spring and you see a woman who's pregnant. And then at the end, she has her baby. I just I really liked that part of the movie. Yeah, that's my favorite shot, actually. Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, I think I think that shot is actually quite synonymous with this film now. They always, when people mention Notting Hill, they always mention that really great transition shot of of going through time, like a whole year. You know, you start off with summer, it's really windy uh, and rainy, uh, and then we go into snow, and then it's summer again. Um, so that's kind of really cool. And you have, like, Hugh Grant's sister, like start Mm. a relationship and then like they break up at the end so that's kind of another great like indicator of the passing of time yeah it's just great as well because i think if you see that in like a modern film today uh doing all that in one shot like they would try and like use filmmaking magic to try and stitch it all together with several setups yeah and trying and trying to like hide the joins where they didn't really do that they had like a big 
you know, snow machine and rain machine yeah. <laughs> all ready to go <laughs> yeah. in this massive street. There might be some, you know, trickery there, but I certainly didn't notice it. Yeah, I didn't notice until I read like they they did that it wasn't like all one shot, um, but to me it feels like one shot and just how seamlessly yeah. that they, they were able to put it all together. Yeah, so ultimately it just felt like really efficient mm-hmm. uh in an artistic way. Um, yes. with the storytelling just really good yeah versus having like seen where i feel like traditionally in a movie like this we would have moments where it just shows him being sad and dejected and yeah. hanging around his apartment like being depressed uh, with the music playing over but i think this is so much more creative more Ronan keating somewhere mm-hmm. and <laughs> you know hugh grant standing at the window with oh yeah it raining and yes. then snowing or something <laughs> yep yep yeah definitely but this is just way more exciting you know and it it, it shows off notting hill you know yeah. a bit more and gives the film a lot more identity uh so favorite shot or scene for you claire Ooh, i mean i definitely like that scene where he's walking and it shows the the passage of time i think my other favorite scene though is the birthday party scene like just that whole okay yeah bit together where we get to meet more of william's friends and just see the group that he typically hangs out with and seeing (laughs) also all of their reactions when they make the connection that this is the anna like this is who she is and um yet they still they still just act kind of like how they typically would they they really don't let it bother them too much until the very end when she leaves and they all like have their freak out scream moment so that they kind of try to keep it together as much as possible then but i didn't realize bernie is hugh bonneville and i watched (laughs) downton abbey so i was like oh my gosh this is like a baby mr crawley like he looked he was so young in this movie and I, yeah. I love the moment when he does not recognize her at all. And he's talking <laughs> yeah. to her and he says, it's really hard to get into acting these days. You know, like you have it's it's doesn't pay very well, does it? And she goes, well, I've, I've done film <laughs> movies. And he goes, oh, well, this, what, did, what was the last pay that you got for your, your role? And she goes, 15 million. And he's like, oh, so that's like really good. And she goes, yeah. Yeah. It is uh, such a British response. Yeah. I love that. Um, it's like, oh. That's that's quite good then, isn't mm-hmm. it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then later he finally he goes, That's Anna Scott. And he's like, Oh God, what have I done? And Why did no one tell me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love the varying levels of reaction as well. Like I love how you have the first lady, I can't remember her name now, um, in the wheelchair. She just you, oh, you have kind of like Bella, she has a fairly reasonable reaction of of shock mm-hmm. um that you would expect a lot of people to have and then <laughs> her husband as well it's kind of similar as well um but kind of can't really believe it and then her, her hugh's sister is just like holy fuck or, you know <laughs> <laughs> swears right at her and then immediately wants to be her best friend yes and is super awkward in the toilet with her oh my gosh yeah um, <laughs> and then obviously hugh Hugh Bonneville, like no reaction at all, just can't, doesn't recognize her at all, which is great. And you're kind of waiting for his reaction. At one point, I was just like, does he just like not watch films? Does she just. Yeah, that's what I I was like. Maybe he just. Like not, just doesn't know who she is at all, you know? Because mm-hmm. there are people like that. So yeah. they could have done that. But, yeah, definitely. But of course, Julia Roberts is a huge star. And obviously, this film kind of works in its favor in that way as well with the casting. Mm-hmm. The really no one else can really pull this part off and i thought that the uh, like later on in the birthday scene when they're all sitting around the table and trying to like basically figure out who is the saddest person here so that they can get the last brownie i feel like that was a really great way of like telling us a little bit of backstory about each person um as well because we get insight into bella and you know her situation mm. being handicapped in a wheelchair and also the devastating news that she and her husband can't have a baby yeah. and so we kind of get that storyline a little bit as well but it also gives anna a chance to like become more human to them because mm. she goes well wait what about me and they're all thinking like no way you cannot be the saddest person here you are such this famous person and she goes on to talk about how she has these fears of 
eventually her looks are going to go and no one's going to remember her. She's going to be forgotten. And there's like this silent pause. And then I think Max is his name or the the husband. He goes, nah, like we don't believe you. And the, everything kind of goes back to normal. <laughs> yeah. But I like that scene too, because it helps us get more like introduced to who Anna is as a person. Uh, so directing score, Claire, what are you going for for Notting Hill? I'm giving this an eight out of 10 for directing. Okay. I, I thought it was really well done. Um, I don't think I've watched a lot of, uh, Roger, is it Michelle? Yeah. Okay. Neither have I, no. Okay. And so, but I feel like all the beats for like a classic rom-com were hit with like the meat Mm. cute where he spills orange juice on his shirt and her shirt um and they have you know the the trajectory of will they won't they the heartbreak the grand romantic gesture at the end which was another like great moment too when they're like driving around mm-hmm. trying to to find her yeah. and i also mm-hmm. love how like this whole movie encapsulates the 90s i love anything that like feels yeah. 90s <laughs> to me and you can definitely get that with the fashion and the hair and the music and all of that I think mm-hmm. there's a lot of really great camera work that's done too in this movie and great direction overall with with their performances. So yeah, I give it eight, eight, an 8 out of 10. Cool. Yeah, I really like this as well. I love how kind of simple this film is with like added bits of flair. Mm-hmm. Like we talked about the long take going of Hugh Grant going through the um, Notting Hill High Street with the changing of the seasons like you know that that's quite a grand shot but like i I never felt that that was kind of out of place Mm -hmm. i feel like the film emotionally and narratively as well frankly had kind of earned that moment as well that moment of flair because we hadn't really had that much flair really i don't think with the direction it's mainly pretty simple letting the actors do their thing so yeah i think it's really great so i might go like Mm, i'll go like an 8.2 yeah (laughs) yeah so screenplay then i like how they set up the first kiss in hugh grant's apartment when they first meet in the bookshop because when they meet in the bookshop richard curtis kind of puts them on the same situational level with dylan moran's character rufus (laughs) like trying to steal a book yeah uh you know hugh grant like confronts him in the most like charming compl- and polite way possible. Then Rufus gets Julia Roberts to sign his book and writes, that's my signature. Above it, it says, Dear Rufus, you belong in jail. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so they both have this kind of like shared humorous disdain for Rufus. Then when Hugh Grant knocks orange juice all over them both uh, in the street, you think he's kind of messed this up. But they end up in his apartment, and I love how Julia Roberts like walks up the stairs to get cleaned up like she's on a different planet. Like, yeah. where the hell am I? This is crazy. Then later, Hugh is asking if she wants a drink or apricots yeah. uh, over and over again. And you never get the sense that it's irritating her. She's kind of like really entertained, really, yeah. and kind of really hiding that uh, squirminess of, of Hugh. You know, she just says no and like taking pleasure in watching Hugh desperately trying to win her affections. So then when she leaves, you're like, the kissing scene is going to happen a bit later in this film. But no, she comes back and picks up her bag of books that she'll frankly never read. <laughs> <laughs> and even then, you you never think that she's going to kiss him in that moment. Like when she does, it doesn't come completely out of the blue, but it also asks like a lot of questions about her own past about why she's just kissed a bookshop owner so it's just a great setup for me and it finds that great balance of kind of being very surprising but there is a connection there but also asking a lot of questions of like why the hell has she just kissed this guy there's a lot there must be a lot going on with Mm. this character yeah i think they did a really good job of uh, establishing their chemistry right off the bat from that first like bookstore moment and seeing that she also has a bit of a personality as that's similar to William and by signing the book and saying that dear Rufus you belong in jail I feel like that's like her kind of playing into Hugh Grant's like character's personality a little bit too and yeah I I really like the scene when 
they're in his flat for the first time. And even like right after the kiss, he goes like, I'm really sorry about the surreal but nice comment to her. Because he calls <laughs> yeah. it surreal but nice. And then afterward, he closes the door and he's like, why did I say that? Yeah. But then her response is like, that's okay. I thought the apricots and honey thing was the real low point. And it just, I love <laughs> yeah. their like banter together. It feels like they fit very well in this in this setting. Yeah, I think the script is incredibly funny and charming and I think mm. that it really comes down to having Hugh Grant in this role and I also learned that like Hugh Grant and Julia Roberts were like the main the the actors they wanted for for this yeah, movie and the script was like written with Hugh Grant's quirky humor in mind. So I feel like they did a really good job with blending that. Yeah, their chemistry is kind of is really great and really palpable, comes off the screen really well. For me, this film definitely sticks to the traditional rom-com tropes and structure in the writing. But mm-hmm. I think what's really interesting is Julia Roberts' character here, Anna Scott, that makes this film a tad unique. Um, because she's a movie star, that's you know, she's a movie star craving some normalcy. Mm-hmm. And you have like Hugh Grant that has like serious issues with staying in a relationship. He's once divorced. So I love that scene that you mentioned as well, um, Claire, where at Hugh Grant's sister's birthday party, they're all telling each other their sob stories to decide who should have the last brownie to determine who's the <laughs> biggest loser. <laughs> yeah. You know, they ha- they all have their turn and Hugh, I think, is the one that's about to eat it. But like Anna's like, hang on, I haven't had my go yet. And she basically says how hard her life is, like very matter of factly. Yeah. You know, they kind of just laugh, but she's very much telling the truth in her head, even though she's kind of saying it in a joking way as well. But you have many examples of that throughout the rest of the film as well, where Anna is struggling with her fame and Hugh Grant struggles um, to help her with that. So it's a really kind of nice point where Hugh and Julia Roberts are trying to get to a certain place emotionally, but it's just becomes really difficult for both of them mm-hmm. throughout the, I mean, there's that restaurant scene as well, where it basically gives you that sense that there is nowhere they can go where they can be themselves sometimes and there's this group of guys at this big round table um, slightly behind them and they're talking shit about Anna basically and you get the sense that Anna is kind of very used to this but it's very she's getting annoyed by it as well naturally as you would but Hugh Grant basically has enough and tries to confront them as well. And Julia Roberts insults them brilliantly by saying that they have like penises the size of, the size of peanuts, which is great. It's brilliant. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. So she's always kind of like striving for normalcy, whereas Hugh Grant is just really struggling to be in a relationship in the first place, but it happens to be a huge movie star. So it's just a great concept in this film. I think the only thing I would say is about the story is that I feel like the film is working very hard to try and combine these two worlds Mm. of a movie star and, you know, trying to get a movie star and a guy that works in a bookshop, you know, together in the same room kind of thing, Mm. like combining these worlds. Because there's a moment where, like, about halfway through the film where there's all these old pictures that have resurfaced in the newspapers Mm. and she's staying with her boyfriend Alec Baldwin in this in the Ritz Hotel I think or the Savoy I can't remember but she decides to like come back to Hugh Grant's place (laughs) and I'm like I'm not sure that's the, the the cleverest thing to do so I feel like that's always gonna set you up to fail like if someone sees you coming out of the hotel like where is she going why has she gone to this random guy's house so you know there is like questions there i think with the storytelling of it's not exactly a very clever move to do that but we always say in life i guess and in movies you do stupid things for love so you can kind of like disregard that with that one line i guess Mm -hmm. but Sometimes I get the feeling that the film is trying very hard to try and get these two characters in the same room. Yeah, I can see that. I think for me, it was also strange how much back and forth there was where it was like they have the, their first meeting and then it's like, are they going to get back together again? And then turns out that um, Spike 
she did call and Spike just forgot to relay the message. So then, you know, they yeah. ha- they have the scene where he goes through the, you know, the, the the press interviews and all of that, the, the birthday party. And, you know, then he runs into Alec Baldwin, who's her boyfriend. And so it's like, okay, that's, it's stopping now. And then it doesn't start again until she's in this kind of desperate situation where these images have come out. She feels like she has nowhere else to turn. She feels like the only place she can go is to see William mm. because he will understand and comfort her. And I think they did a good job setting up how awful Alec Baldwin's character is. Yeah. <laughs> in that very like small scene where he's like, I only will take very, very cold still water. And yeah. also tells Anna basically not to get too much room service because he doesn't want to be seen with a fat person, which is just <laughs> crazy. Disgusting. Yeah. So I feel like they did a good job of showing us like this is not someone that she feels like she can be comforted with and be by herself. Um, but she has seen that William is willing to stand up for her in that scene with all of the guys in the restaurant. So yeah. there's like a comfort level there. And even though it's not like the smartest move on her part, because ultimately we get that confrontation scene where the press do find out she's there. Mm. I kind of understand why she would do it. Yeah, it's it's an interesting um, dynamic as well with... Hugh and Julia Roberts characters because you have Julia Roberts the movie star she can basically get any man she wants Mm -hmm. (laughs) frankly you know and with Hugh Grant like it's pretty impossible that he can get any woman he wants (laughs) so it's just a great um, meeting of these completely opposite characters but yet they're very similar in the same way because Mm -hmm. with Julia Roberts like she's just she's kind of like spoilt for choice she doesn't really know what she kind of wants i get that feeling throughout the film and again because she's kind of just striving for normalcy and hugh grant kind of doesn't really know what he wants either they i think it's just a kind of a perfect match in that way Mm -hmm. emotionally yeah what did you make of like you know hugh grant supporting characters his friends and family like you know hugh bonneville Bella and and uh, the others like did you want more of those characters because they certainly provide a lot of the humor here mm-hmm. I mean you, you mentioned that Bella announces that she couldn't have kids and there's that scene where like a fairly well not dramatic but an interesting scene where they go to this restaurant and it's kind of like the last time they're going to eat there so that's kind of played as a fairly melodramatic well not melodramatic but a fairly dramatic scene but a somber scene that's the word i'm looking for i guess but you know did you want more from those characters um, to be more fleshed out or i don't think necessarily i feel like we got the yeah. right amount of them peppered throughout the movie and they came in when they needed yeah. to come in and disappeared when they needed to disappear and if say for instance spike got the same amount of screen time i would have probably had issue because i really like his character but he had more screen time and uh, I feel like he had the great, the, like the best amount of of time as well on, yeah. on screen. And just every moment with Spike, I was like, "What? What is? What <laughs> is this eccentric Welshman gonna say next? Like, what's he gonna do when he eats the ma- the mayonnaise?" And he's like, "This yogurt tastes different." And William's <laughs> like, "That's because it's mayonnaise." And then he eats it again. He's like, "Oh, yep, huh. yep, that makes sense." So still tastes good though. <laughs> so I'm I'm glad that we got a lot of a lot more spike um in terms of like his friends group he was the one who got the most i think out of them all and i think that was Mm -hmm. just based off of the performance from from him he did a really great job with that uh so funny or interesting lines then claire oh yes i did write down a a few (laughs) yes i have lots to (laughs) when he says things when william says things like shitty 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 shitty, brickerty um i (laughs) Yeah, <laughs> and uh, whoopsie daisies, which yeah. I feel like I'm prone to say a lot. So I, I related to really, him in that. <laughs> yeah. I'll go like whoopsie daisies. Are you a little girl from the 19th century? <laughs> yeah, really? minus the gold. Uh, you know, ring- I do have ringlets. They're just you know not blonde. Okay. <laughs> I also love how every awkward moment is um, a chance for someone to offer tea to someone. 
I don't know if that's yeah. a very like British that, thing to do. It is indeed. Okay. That is the go-to problem solving device. Yes. Is to make a cup of tea and nine times out of 10, it works. Mm-hmm. But in most situations in this film, it does not. Obviously. Right. <laughs> like I think every time someone offers tea, except once, tea is not taken. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's brilliantly British in that way. Mm-hmm. I love that. The moment after he's kind of like spill orange juice on Anna Scott and he says, I'm confident that in five minutes we can have you spick and span and have you back on the street again. In the non-prostitute <laughs> sense, obviously. <laughs> obviously. Yeah. Which is amazing. Mm-hmm. I'm just going into the kitchen to get some food. Then I'm going to tell you a story that will make your balls shrink <laughs> to the size of raisins. <laughs> Which is amazing. This is a wonderful spike impression. Thank you very much. <laughs> I have. Uh, I am actually quarter well, so my granddad was fully well, so I, I nice. can do it quite well. I mean, sometimes it, it goes drifts into South African or Jamaican, but <laughs> <laughs> I quite like it. Um, uh, did you? <laughs> I love the moments during like the the really awkward um, interviews that he stumbled across <laughs> that that he stumbled on for this sci fi film, and he's like. Did you identify with the character you're playing? <laughs> no. Oh, why not? Because he's playing a psycho, uh, psychopathic, flesh-eating robot. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that'll do that. Which I thought was great. Yeah. yeah. I love how he asks the girl, like, who... I can't remember if it's, like, who she's, liked working with the most. But then she says Leonardo. And to me, I was like, oh, yeah, Leonardo uh, yeah. DiCaprio. Like, that's who that is. Yeah. But then he goes, Leonardo <laughs> da Vinci? And he goes, no. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was the one joke where I was just like, really? You've yeah. not heard of Leonardo DiCaprio? Right. I know. <laughs> like Titanic had come out by this point, so he he was pretty yeah. well known. Yeah. I also like how when Anna's at his flat and they're kind of like having a conversation about clauses of like nudity that she's like, I don't even like allow that yeah. anymore. And they talk about Mel Gibson and Anna goes, well, <laughs> Mel Gibson does his own ass work. I thought that was <laughs> very funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah a very simple one i think in the in the hotel i think with alec baldwin i can't remember where someone says what's your name and he says bernie <laughs> <laughs> yeah in this kind of really pathetic way yeah um and i love the scenes uh when hugh grant is like dating these all these other women mm. after anna has gone back to america and the fruitarian oh my god <laughs> he's dating and he says, so these carrots have been murdered, yes. Gosh, poor old carrots. Yeah. That's beastly. <laughs> beastly, yes. Yeah, so good. Um, I love at the end when Spike Spike saves the day and stops the the traffic so that they can oh, yeah. get out so into, <laughs> you know, on the street. And he um there's a moment at the end where they've they've made it, they're out, and he waves to them and a motorcycle whizzes past him very closely, but then the car <laughs> tries to come and he turns around and he goes, Down boy. I just, <laughs> I, I loved that yeah. part. It was my maybe my yeah. favorite Spike moment. Yeah, I, th- I think that sounded like ADR. It did. It sounded like it was added in post, but I'm like, that's fine. I'm glad you, yeah. it was It was the right choice. Definitely. And then like, I mean, this isn't funny, but like the most romantic line of the movie oh, yeah. of all is from mm-hmm. Anna when she says, I'm just a girl standing in front of a boy asking Ugh. him to love her. And I'm like, that's the line. Like, that's the most famous yeah. line of this movie. And it's done yeah. so well. So did you hear of that line before you watched this film then? Did you know of it? Did I actually didn't know this that line was from this movie. Um, but I'd heard oh, okay. of the line. Like I knew it was I'm yeah. just a girl standing in front of a boy. And then, <laughs> you know, maybe people make different variations of what's said at the end. Yeah. But but yeah, I was like, that's that's the line. This is what this movie's from. I was like, me, like the Leonardo DiCaprio meme where it's like I'm pointing at the screen and I'm like, Yep. <laughs> that's that's this movie. Yeah. <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio has the best memes. He really oh, does. absolutely, one hundred percent. My favorite is the his Calvin Candy one from <laughs> Django and Chains yeah. with the cocktail. Mm-hmm. That is hilarious. Yep. Um, happiness isn't happiness without a violin playing goat. Is obviously brilliant. Yes, I wrote that one down too. That was great. Yeah, and in the kind of the car chase, well, you know, 
And he says, James Bond doesn't have to put up with this shit. Yes, that was great too. <laughs> Just so many great, funny yeah. moments, funny dialogue. I think, yeah, like I said, this, the script is mm. super funny. And it's also like the way that each cast member delivers the line is is so funny. Because these like yeah. some of these things on their own, I'm, I wouldn't find funny, but it's the delivery yeah. as well. That's so great. So good. Yeah. Uh, my favorite line is, it, I mean, it could be a lot of these, to be honest, but certainly tonight I chose this particular one, particular one that you've mentioned already, Claire, um, from Hugh Bonneville at the party, the birthday party. Uh, and he asks, you know, I mean, last film, film you did, what did you get paid? And Robert says, $15 million. Right. Well, so that's fairly good then. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. I just like how he takes a pause for a minute and he's like, yeah, the, not what I was expecting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love the fact that he's not like really shocked uh, on his face. He's just like, mm -hmm. I see. Right. That's a lot of money. <laughs> right. After, yeah. And it's just funny because right, right before he had been talking about how like his friends have been in the yeah. acting game and he's like you don't make a lot of money doing that yeah. it's a really tough job <laughs> and not knowing any idea that this is the anna scott so yeah i i liked that moment as well uh screenplay score then claire what are you going for for notting hill i'm gonna give this a nine out of ten i love the script Ooh, okay. i think this is like a match made in heaven i had read that like grant and curtis have like a marriage made an actor writer marriage made in heaven like they're perfect like well to do perfectly well together and richard curtis i didn't realize did love yeah. actually which also has hugh yeah. grant and also bridget jones's diary so like it makes sense why the script is so four weddings and a funeral yeah yeah that too yeah i think the script is incredibly clever and funny but also has these like really touching moments with like the one-on-one -on -one conversations when it gets a little bit more serious i feel like the dialogue yeah. is is great in those scenes as well but yeah, just for the humor alone, I'm like, this is 9 out of 10 for me. Cool. Um, I'm not sure I'll go that high, but certainly as as rom-coms go, you like you're not really going to get too better than too much better than this. Mm -hmm. You know, I would say, you know, the apartment and when Harry met Sally are probably better for me. But mm. as rom-coms go, this is pretty remarkable. Like this, I think this is peak Hugh Grant as well yeah um, at his most awkward and, and again i just really love this idea that you have a huge star uh, in julia roberts and they're really kind of playing off that idea of she's really struggling as kind of as much as a lot of these other characters or a lot of these other british characters in london uh, emotionally so they kind of they they meet at the same emotional level at a lot of times but they're just struggling in different ways so i just felt that was just a really clever way of, of telling your story and yeah as you say it, it's hilarious <laughs> um and so british it's unbelievable <laughs> um so i'm gonna go like an 8.7 for me nice acting then hugh grant is certainly mm. at peak awkward english gentleman mm. mode in his career in this film i loved the scene where he's going to uh, anna scott's apartment at the ritz and he's followed by another person not knowing who he is <laughs> and Hugh Grant is like wonderfully polite and looks very confused yes. uh, the whole time down the corridor. Uh, and when they go in, it becomes very apparent that this other person is a journalist and the panic on Hugh Grant's face mm. is absolutely priceless. Uh, and the scene where he's alone with Anna, Julia Roberts, is great as he gets to relax ever so slightly. But then the panic arrives on his face again in a flash as someone else comes in the room. Uh, her publicist, I think, you know, no one does that as good as Hugh Grant. And mm -hmm. I love the moment where he says, <laughs> I was just wondering whether you ever thought of having more uh, horses in it. <laughs> well, we would have liked to, but it was difficult, obviously, being set in space. <laughs> Then, of course, the awkwardness triples when when he has to do the interviews for the rest of the cast. Mm -hmm. And I love the, the when it goes on in that scene with Julia Roberts. <laughs> like, oh, she wants to know about her next film. It's like, oh, any horses in your next film? Well, it's set in a submarine. Yeah. So, no. <laughs> he says, like, hor uh, horses or hounds for that matter. We like both yeah. species equally. <laughs> 
Yeah, so I think that scene in particular is just peak mm. awkward Hugh yes. Grant for me. Absolutely. Yeah, Hugh Grant just has, he's so incredibly charming in like mm. a boy next door quality where he's just like a yeah. little goofy, but he's so funny and sweet. And I love how they nickname him Floppy uh, for his floppy hair. Yeah. And I feel like that maybe that was a little meta for for hugh grant himself because he definitely has the the floppy hair aspect yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah i like I, I just his sense of humor because i don't even know if he's like trying to be funny but the things that he says are so <laughs> sarcastic and so like not like in a cruel way but just in like a side note way and yeah he just he just brings an incredible charm to this movie yeah. and yeah i mean this really was his also like peak time in the rom-com era and still like went mm. on to do even more and for me i think like maybe i don't know what the first movie i ever saw him in was but love love actually i feel like was yeah. very much like in he was in the zeitgeist for the rom-com and then he went on to do two weeks notice and i'm, I'm on other films so yeah he he was definitely he had that like 90s sweet boy quality yeah. about him and now he's an umba lumba <laughs> um <laughs> yeah. oh, goodness yes uh i can imagine him on set as well like because he's got this just like natural british charm awkwardness mm -hmm. to him and like i can imagine people off set just laughing at him. oh yeah <laughs> just Definitely. talking to people like well i'm not with the cameras on rolling what's going yeah on? <laughs> <laughs> it just feels like i mean obviously i don't know who hugh grant is as an individual but many yeah. of the roles that he's in, I feel like that is him. Like, that is just yeah, his personality. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, yeah, a match made in heaven, I think, him and Richard Curtis. Mm -hmm. uh, I loved the comic timing and physical uh, comedic acting from Reese Iphens. I loved the moment where he goes outside to discover all, like, the journalists right outside. Oh and gosh. he just struts his stuff and strikes a pose uh, in the most ridiculous way. And frankly, it's even better when he comes back and says... Well chosen briefs, I'd say. Yeah. Chicks love grey. Nice firm buttocks. It's like <laughs> butt cheeks clenched back and forth. It's yeah. so great. Yeah, and fairly disgusting as well. Yeah, I mean, yes, that too. <laughs> yeah. So I'm pretty sure he's a wedgie in that scene as well. <laughs> Just like TMI, but that's fine, Reese. You're you're great. Yeah. I love when he's wearing the prescription goggles, which never knew that yeah. was even a thing. And he's wearing them. No, I didn't know. And he blows smoke into the goggles, yeah. and you just see the smoke cover the the eyes of the goggles. It's just so many small moments where I, I love yeah. him so much. And I love mm. that he and Honey get together. I just wanted to also mention that because yeah. I feel like they're both equally eccentric and so sweet together. I I know it seems like a little, maybe a little random, a little like out of left field that they introduced that, but I felt I felt like it was perfect. I liked them together. Yeah. I loved um Honey's announcement that she's gonna get engaged. Yes. And then she turns to <laughs> to Spike and says, It's you by the way. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, Oh, yeah. Really? <laughs> and he says groovy to That's everything. Great. He goes groovy. groovy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so good. I love Julia Roberts when she comes back to the bookshop mm. after she said he was just someone from her past on that like costume drama set. Mm -hmm. You know, in the shop, she looks so vulnerable, cute, and nervous mm. at the same time, like the complete opposite of the movie star that she's been playing and trying to get away from. Mm -hmm. You know, this whole scene just encapsulates this idea, and it's all through her acting uh and when she says the line that you mentioned claire brilliantly like the fame thing isn't really real you know and don't forget i'm just a girl standing in front of a boy asking him to love her uh that always gets to me <laughs> <laughs> i always feel the feels in that moment like that line is pretty cheesy i would argue but basically because it's delivered so well with such emotion you can't help but feel something there so mm -hmm. Yeah, that that's always the scene where I'm like, oh, <laughs> this is really good. I know, and you're like, yes, William, you are a daft prick. You definitely need to go <laughs> yeah. after her. I love that Spike's the only one. Who, like, all of his yeah. friends are like, you did the right thing. Yeah. This is good for you. And Spike comes in and 
William goes, I, or they say, William turned Anna down and he just turns to him and he goes, you daft prick. And yeah, he's the only one to, to kind of like spark something in William to, yeah. to finally go see her. But yeah, I love Julia Roberts performance in this. I feel like it's like a little bit more of a muted role for her mm. than I think I've typically seen in other of her rom-com movies, um, which, you know, can be outlandish, like my best friend's wedding. So if there's some sort of like personality, yeah. I think that has to be added to those kind of movies. But for Notting Hill, I liked that she is pretty reserved and kind of quiet in the beginning um, because she is mm. trying to have this like shield up, I think, and set like just have like a, a little, not a facade, but just kind of protect herself in some ways. And mm. you only get hints of her personality here and there. But when the photos are released and she does go to William's apartment and she's just like so dejected and you know you really feel for her I think in that moment because this story is like nothing new like this happens to people all Mm. the time and you really feel for her from her perspective like it just sucks to have to go through this and I felt like I just wanted to go jump in the movie and like give her a big hug and like ripped down all the newspapers that had her picture in it so i feel like that's just a great performance from julia roberts in that scene yeah she's amazing and i think i definitely agree that certainly throughout most of this film she kind of has this movie star veil in her acting and doesn't really let out her true personality and obviously when she is with and i think she kind of has that a little bit i would imagine with like other her other boyfriends she kind of has that to a certain extent in that small scene with uh, Alec Baldwin as well. But when she is with Hugh Grant, progressively that veil is stripped away. Mm -hmm. And when, as you say, when the newspapers do reveal all these terrible photos and, um, you know, and these, all, all these reporters are outside, it's like in that moment for her, it's like the one chance of like true love, (laughs) Uh, could be shattered in that moment so Mm -hmm. she's really just completely just ripping off the veil and just be like why is this happening to me you know that's a great moment yeah even in like her confrontation with William at the end where you know the press have found them at his flat and she freaks out and this is like the typical rom-com moment where they have a falling out type type of deal but you know the 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 way that she speaks to William it's like she can you can see it in her face when she says to him like I will regret this forever that she, she instantly like regrets saying that in her eyes to him um yeah. and I love like that little note but she never says like sorry she just leaves um in that instance we don't find out till later that yeah she feels really bad about saying that to him so I liked that as well and I think there's a whole like aspect of this movie where it's very meta in the fact that like yeah. Julia Roberts is like she was like the it girl in the 90s yeah <laughs> and she's playing this character who is like the it girl in in the movie itself so I feel like that has to also like be interesting an interesting like way like that you perform as mm. well yeah I think that's a good point because like how much of a separate character is she actually putting into this performance mm-hmm. or is she just basically acting like julia roberts yeah. herself yeah. in her normal life i think there is a bit of a, a character there for sure but not mm-hmm. too much i wouldn't say yeah <laughs> yeah definitely from her real life mm-hmm. um and even like at the like press conference scene is super great and super cheesy <laughs> uh you know it's like they're the only two people in the room at the mm-hmm. end so i kind of love it you know they're just smiling constantly uh as the music bellows out yeah yeah so, i feel like that was a great callback the only way it could end yeah i feel like that was a great callback to the original press conference scene where yeah. you know he's like talking about himself in third person and saying mm. like would you uh would you see that person as more than friends and then she says yes and he goes like the readers of horse and hound will be delighted or, or so i can't remember what he says exactly but i just like <laughs> that it, it wraps back to that scene too and then yeah we get that like huge declaration of love that you typically see in a rom-com uh favorite performance for you claire who are you going for um spike i love him i think 
Okay. Reese Ifans. Yes, Reese Ifans. I, I'm always nervous to say his name because I feel like I'm going to absolutely butcher <laughs> it. But yes, Reese <laughs> Ifans. And I think, I mean, I know this is a Julia Roberts Legends film, but I do think Hugh Grant like steals every moment that he is in. All right. I think we've, I mean, the film kind of follows him more so than it does Julia Roberts. We only see. Uh, we never really see Anna by herself. We only see mm. William by himself. Um, so I think that's natural. Like we're going to get a little bit more of his personality and performance. So um, I did mm. like him a lot in this movie too. Yeah, I think, I mean, Hugh, Hugh Grant is amazing, but I do feel like there's only certain there's only a certain range that he can go to mm, yeah <laughs> uh which is fine in this kind of type of mi- movie and you know he's the leading man in this and that's the way he, he's going to get a lot of the comedy and the emotion from his from this film in that particular performance so at times i feel like there is kind of just one note there yeah but i think that's a fair point because like one of the things i noted when they were having that fight like i kind of wish that he got into the fight more like he seemed like he was very like blase about it and not Mm -hmm. like he was just saying to her like the newspapers are going to be old news by tomorrow and i would like she felt uh, julie roberts like she was getting angry and i wanted him to get angry as well and just have like a a little bit more emotion because at this point like he's been rejected from her multiple times Mm. and like and gone back i wish that had like folded in a little bit more um it is at the like very end which is why he tells her no but just like i wanted him to lose it Mm. a little bit yeah i definitely get that as well but it's interesting with this film as well i mean in that moment do you feel like is he kind of remembering that she's a movie star? And, Maybe, yeah. <laughs> and that there is a fear factor there for for William. Like, oh shit, this is a movie star shouting at me. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I could see that. Although yeah. at that point they've like been intimate with each other, yeah. so like how you know, there. I feel like mm. a little bit of that facade has fallen away, and they've just become kind of normal people yeah. talking to each other. Yeah, I think you may be right there. That's interesting. Um, but I think I'm going to go with Julia Roberts as my mm. favorite performance. I think she just has a great range here. And, and as we've spoken about, like, it's just really interesting seeing how she peels away this movie star, these movie star, like, layers mm-hmm. from her veil. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So that's that's really cool for me to watch on screen. And, and just chemistry-wise between the two oh, yeah. uh, is really great. Yeah, I love their chemistry together. Yeah, I think Julia Roberts just edges it for me. Her her performance definitely seems like more nuanced, I think, than, than Hugh Grant's is in some ways because she's yeah. having to juggle being this celebrity that also has a human element and human-like side yeah. to her in some ways. So yeah. So Claire, what is your acting score for Notting Hill? I'm going to give this an 8.5. I feel like this is a really well-developed cast. And um, like I mentioned before, like Julia Roberts and Hugh Grant were the like the key actors they wanted for these two characters. And I'm glad that they got them on board. I can't imagine it being anybody else but yeah. Julia Roberts and Hugh Grant and also Risa. I finds, am I saying that correctly? Reese I finds. I finds. Oh, <laughs> cut that out. <laughs> Just kidding. You don't have to do that. But yeah. Um yeah, definitely keeping it in. <laughs> he he's he just brings like such a great element as like the side character, the like sidekick. Yeah. That <laughs> I was really captivated every time I saw him on screen. And even the friends, like, I feel like they are all very well cast too. Even like, I feel like so many random people pop up like Alec Baldwin <laughs> yeah. and Hugh Bonneville, but I was just so happy to see these characters. And um, yeah, I feel like they made all of the characters very believable for me. Yeah. I'm going to go with a fairly similar score. Um, yeah. All the acting is, is great. Like Julia Roberts, as we said, is, are, is amazing. Hugh Grant is peak Hugh Grant, frankly, and all the other characters like they're not on screen too much but when they are they they are really memorable uh especially Reese Ifans who is frankly mm-hmm. hilarious in every frame of the film so <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm going to go like an 8.4 for me nice right let's add up the scores then for Notting Hill I need a little drum roll <laughs> <laughs> 
Notting Hill gets 50.8, which is pretty Woo. impressive. I feel like we're all being very generous in the first half of the year. Yeah. <laughs> I think pretty much nearly all the films have got in the 50s so far. <laughs> so nice, everyone nice. has good taste at the moment, which is good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's it for part one. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. Check out part two to see who wins. But don't stop there. Get involved and tell me what your favourite films are relating to the episode. Send us a DM or comment on Instagram and TikTok at Film vs. Film Podcast for X at FVF underscore podcast. Plus, we are now on YouTube, so hit that like button and comment there. If you do, I'll give you a shout out on the next episode. Remember please leave us a five-star review and subscribe. Pod signing off.